Hello all, welcome to part 23 of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert. In this video, we will basically start understanding how to program your own scripts using Metapreter. Now, for this, the first thing to need know is API basics on how we can go ahead and find things in the huge complicated code base of Metasploit uh, to go ahead and use that with Metapreter. This video is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. If you would like to enroll and certify, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video is provided on Security Tube free of charge uh, in line with our vision mission to provide free yet quality InfoSec education to one and all. Okay, so Metapreter, right? We all have used it, we all love it. But Metapreter is actually a platform rather than an isolated little utility which ships with Metasploit. And when I say platform, what I mean is that you can write your own scripts and have them run on this platform. To do this, of course, I know the programmer in you is already asking, hey, so where is the API which Metapreter exposes uh, to developers, right? Uh, if you remember, we had used Railgun a couple of videos back and Railgun is an essential utility or an essential technique using which you can extend the functionality of the framework. So when you want to write Metapreter scripts, you can use the APIs which ship with the framework or you can use Railgun to call arbitrary functions from DLLs available on the victim system. In this video and probably for the next two, I will concentrate on using the native APIs which ship with the framework. Okay, so now documentation. Unfortunately, documentation on the API is pretty sparse and most of what you are going to learn is how to look at code and find things. Now, if you would like to explore the code base, the core code is in librex and Metapreter related stuff is mainly inside post Metapreter. So let's go there. I've already exploited a Windows 7 system and I'm on it. This is what we are going to use for the video. Now let me go to the framework directory, pen test exploits, framework lib rex post matter brother, right? And then you see tons of Ruby files here, a lot of directories most of which looks really intimidating. Now, if you would like to find different APIs and stuff like that, this directly is going to be your gold mine and the subdirectories within it. So let me give you a simple example. Now, we all remember that to use extensions, we go ahead and actually have to load up that extension. Now, how do you use it programmatically? So you can actually call let me go to the right directory, client dot, if you open up one of these files, so this is basically the client core, so client dot core dot, going ahead and using it with use, would allow you to use any extension and load it up. So let me go here, so if you notice, loads a Metapreter extension on the remote instance and initializes client side handlers, right? So for example, if you wanted to load up Sniffer, which is not there, you could simply use this and load it up. So let's go ahead and actually, so typically you would use the use command, right? To load stuff up. And as we can clearly see at this point, a couple of things have not been loaded. So let's say, uh, you know, you want to load Sniffer programmatically mind it, right? Use sniffer would just load it through Metapreter. So I'm going into IRB mode and I say client.core 
dot use and within brackets let's say sniffer is what I want to load right and response of true means that now sniffer has been loaded right fantastic now basically if we kind of go back to the same file and scroll a little bit more down how many of us have used migrate to migrate to a new process almost all of us so if you would like to migrate to a new PID you could basically go ahead and call migrate and this would do the job so let's say I exit IRB mode for a second I do a quick PS I do a get PID to figure out who I am 520 let's say I want to go inside I explore dot exe which is 1156 right go into IRB again client dot core dot migrate and 1156 is the PID of I explore right so let's see what happens this takes a bit typically and it responds with true let me exit this let's do a get PID and there you go our PID is changed the key difference is we are now doing it programmatically and that is what gives us a ton of power right because now you can actually write your own scripts which do a variety of these tasks now in this video what I'm going to do is help you find the different API's in this whole jungle of Ruby scripts uh, and figure out how to go about unearthing all of these interesting API's so we looked at migrate now STD API is probably one of the extensions we use extremely when we are in metal predator mode right STD API itself has a ton of uh, sub utils if I may or sub extensions which is FS for file system, sys for various system level stuff, net for you know the configuration, the, uh, the routing, things like that, the interfaces and railgun which we've already visited in very detail, webcam, UI and a bunch of other stuff. So if you want to go ahead and investigate further go into the extensions directory inside that you would see directories for most of the common extensions which you are probably used I'm going to std api and I'm going to open up std api.rb and if I scroll down if you notice this basically gives me file system which again is dirt file and file stat and then you have sys which has config process registry etc so basically process allows us to do manipulation of processes which is what we are going to see in the next uh, in the next two videos uh, event log allows us to play with the event log power with the power on the remote system like shutting it down rebooting it etc uh, let's go inside fs and have a look at what's there and let's open up dir.rb to look at what apis are available to us so for example one of the interesting things you always want to find out is your present directory right dir get uh, dir.pwd returns the current working directory okay fantastic so here is what I'm going to do fall into IRB mode again client and basically what I'm going to be using here is fs for the file system then I was in dir and then what I'm using is PWD so here goes right and it basically gives me the present working directory which typically you would have found by using the PWD command from within Metaprator. now let's say I want to list all the files in the current directory like right? let me go back check if there is any interesting stuff here okay dir entries is what allows me to basically look at all the files in a given directory fair enough so let's say client.fs.dir and after that what we really have here is entries right and then we need to give a directory so let's say I'm interested in C drive 
and if you notice it returns an array of the file names which you would see in C drive on the Windows 7 victim system right if you had been there and basically what it is listing is this along with all the different hidden files and stuff like that right fantastic so here you can see all the hidden files as well uh, the config.sys and a bunch of other things which of course you're not able to see here just some basic stuff now if you want to change your current directory which is your present working directory all you have to do programmatically is find a function with just that which is chdir changes the working directory of the remote process so let's say I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna say hey let me just go down to C drive right or probably better C drive and then I want to go inside Windows and there you go so now if I do a PWD I'm in C drive Windows right so this is how very simply using these API's I am able to manipulate, go around the file system and do a ton of interesting things. Now you should look at the different APIs and play with them. My recommendation is before you writing, start writing Metaprinter scripts, run them from the IRB mode and ensure you understand the return values, whether they are arrays, hashes, whatnot, and only then start actually going ahead and writing Metaprinter scripts. So now let's look at the different APIs under Sys. Now to do that, let's go back here and let's go one directory up to Sys. And inside that, let's open up config.rb. So if you remember, whenever we used to hit Sys info, we used to get a ton of results. Well, we can do it programmatically as well. So I'm going to do, let me clear the screen, client dot sys right dot config sysinfo and you notice I actually get a hash of a couple of interesting things so if I'm only interested in the remote OS let me reference it by the key and it says Windows 7 if I am interested let's say in the computer name this is what I do and I get security QPC fantastic right now you could go ahead and play with these APIs uh, and probably for example if one of your scripts requires the remote system to be Windows 7 well you can now go ahead take the OS and go ahead and check if it works or not similarly you could play along with different APIs which allow you to explore the remote network interfaces routes etc you can do that by going into the net directory and let's open up config inside that and if you notice we basically have a little call here which says get interfaces which is going to return an array of network interfaces so here goes clear the screen client dot net dot config and I think we had get interfaces right and if you look at the output let me just go ahead and Print these two separately. This is the first interface, which, if you're already looking at the output, you know it's the loopback interface. And this is the actual physical adapter interface, which seems to be a blah 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 Intel adapter, right? With along with the MAC address as well. Fantastic. Now, what you could do is by scrolling down, what you would eventually notice is you can even get the different routes configured on the remote machine. So I can just go here, change this, and say, hey, give me the list of routes. And there you go. So I can look at each of these routes separately because the output seems to be an array. There you go. And this gives me a ton of detail about what is configured in the routing table on the remote system. Now, there are tons of uh, APIs which are available. And as I mentioned, not all of them are properly documented. So because of that, what you may need to do is you may need to go look at the source code, explore a couple of these interesting APIs and then play along with them. Right. So that is all there in this video. 
in the next video what we will do is we will use these APIs and create the very first Metaprinter script which is a clone of Migrate and in the video after that we will go ahead and create a script which searches for a specific process name in the list of running processes on the victim system. I can assure you it will be a fantastic enjoyable experience, right? So that's all for this video, uh, which is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. If you would like to enroll and certify, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Thank you.